level 64 prelims. Upgrade toilet with your review. Sit back and destroy the show. Hey there, welcome to another Lemon 64 play guide and review. In this week's episode, we'll be taking a look at 720 Degrees, developed by Chris Butler and published by US Gold in time for Christmas 1987. You can see the title screen is rather plain and there is no title music, but we get to see the high scores. And I certainly remember having this game back in the day in the big box, so let's press fire and check this game out. In this game, we play as a skater in Skate City. We must enter four events and compete for tickets and prize money. There are also four shops dotted around. The first one I'm going to go for is the shoes, which gives us higher acceleration and a higher jump. And we start the game with $100, so let's use that up. The next upgrade we will go for is the helmet, which gives us a better turning ability. And while we're here, let's spend the rest of our cash on a board, which gives us a higher top speed. And then we can enter one of these events. The first event I like to go for is the ramp, and that's pretty easy considering the ramp that we had to put up with in California games. Yes, this ramp only requires us to basically move the stick up and down in that isometric 3D angle, and when we're in the air, all we need to do is to rotate that very quickly in a circle and line that thing up back to land in a safe place. Every time you complete a rotation, that will give us 100 points, and so if you complete 5 like this, you should be able to get 500 points. And in this game, points mean prizes. Yes, the bottom corner you can see next ticket at 5,000 points. So as long as we keep scoring those and get a gold on every single event, then we should be able to get a free ticket to the next one. After that, we will be booted out to try another event and we can only enter an event once per level, so if we mess that up, that's no problem, we'll just have to continue as long as we keep earning score in this game, and I used to be able to press fire and earn score on the spot, but not anymore, unfortunately, if you collide with anything, then that's a wipeout, and you have infinite lives in this game until the timer runs out, you can see on the bottom, and then naturally we'll be attacked by a large swarm of killer bees, and on contact they will kill us, Let's just get the shoes for more acceleration, and well, that killed us unfortunately, but we can use continues in this game, and the bees are the only things which will take away a life in this game, but we are given some continues, so let's continue on to the downhill section, and we have some better turning ability, this is slightly easier, and yes, it gives us plenty of time to complete the downhill, as long as we have those upgrades, it shouldn't be such a bad job. But it is easy to mess this up, and you have to turn in mid-air. If you turn before that, then sometimes it won't work. And if you haven't got the upgrades, then you might just slide straight off. And I think you have to complete this three times. And on the third time, if we get to that line, which is entirely possible, even though I'm taking quite a few wipeouts, well, I got the silver, it certainly is possible to get the gold and get the free ticket. If you don't, then you'll have to earn the score some other way. And we still have two tickets in the bank. And look at that, two guys having a fight. Yes, this town is populated by moped riders and bodybuilders, and even guys having a fight. So, the map is pretty straightforward. It's a pretty small sandbox town, and you might even find a drain cover on the floor there. Let's just get some more pads and the pads in this game gives us a better faster recovery time and it's a pity that I'm playing the crack at the moment because on the crack it doesn't actually show us the numbers by the items that we've picked up 
So, well, we've collected a few of those, and you can see the faster acceleration and the higher jumps afforded to us by two sets of shoes now actually gives us the highest jump and the acceleration to actually get through these levels. And look at that, make a meal of this, but you can get through that. It's giving me the bronze, and that's no hardship as long as you get through these. Then you can move on to the next one. Dotted around Skate City, you will also find jumps and things where we can simply earn the score. And as long as we earn that score, one way or another, we'll get the ticket. Let's just go for some more upgrades and let's just spend all that money. Because money only counts for upgrades in this game and not for progress. And no, we can't go back on the ramp. We have to find the slalom, and that's pretty much in the western direction, right about here. And the slalom is perhaps the easiest event in the entire game. In fact, I'd probably recommend going for the slalom first or second on your round. And then you can hopefully get two golds in a row. And let's see if I can make that. Well, here we go. When I was a lot better at this game, I have managed to get up to at least level 4, maybe even further than that. But it's been a long time since I've played this. I recommend going for the ramp, the slalom, the jumps, followed by the downhill, so you can get all the upgrades and spend all your available cash on those. And upgrading should hopefully allow you to progress in this game. On level 2, it has a very much tighter time limit and it means you'll have to go hell for leather and have all those upgrades in the bank just to be able to survive. It's great to see that this town is populated by lots of graphical features and great things to do for an action player in an open world landscape. But unfortunately the colours are nothing to write home about, the graphics could have been drawn much better. And as you see me milking some score to reach that magic 25,000 points I need for another ticket before the bees catches up, I'll just say that the music in this game is also pretty dire. In fact many people like this music but I think it's appalling and it's a conversion of the original arcade music of course but ramped up to number 11. I think Ben Dagalish has done a great job but it's still a killer soundtrack which kills my ears even today. This game was coded, of course, by Chris Butler, who'd already done Commando in 85 before this, and moved on to Space Harrier, Power Drift, Thunderblade, and Turbocharge. The music, Ben Daglish, he created the Biggles music, of to say Monty, The Last Ninja, Taramex that we reviewed already, and Pac-Mania, which I reviewed on the Amiga channel. So, great heritage behind those guys, it's a pity that the game is pretty bland best thing about the game by far is the controls and the responsiveness of this character and it means that we can play the game. doesn't help by the fact that I'm actually playing the crack at the moment and you can see by the bottom corner there is no numbers by the items that we've collected so we've no idea of the upgrades but if you do collect the upgrades in the right order and compete in the right order get all those golds first time then the game becomes a doddle and you can go around and collect everything that you need and progress pretty quickly. I guess the most important pickup is the helmet and that makes us turn more quickly, especially on this level. And you do need to be able to turn and get that grip and 
If you can do so, then you'll be in the gold section. If you can't, you'll be booted out of this level pretty darn quickly. You wouldn't believe that I used to be able to create some amazing maneuvers over water, but I'm afraid my skills have defeated me after all these years, and now I can barely create any score moving in a straight line. And that's quite depressing, so let's just move on to the scores. Ace gave this game 60%, Commodore Force gave it 65 Commodore User gave it 70%, and Zap gave 70 degrees 85 percent in February 1988. Julian Rignall praised the Fast and Furious action and they berated the graphics and the music but they said this game was action-packed and they also said it was great to control. So that gives 70 degrees an average score of 7 out of 10. No more continues remaining, we gain some more bonus and then we are taken straight to the high score table and this time some really good music to round off this game. I think it hasn't aged very well and I'd probably give this a 6 out of 10. Surprisingly, there was a hack of this game released by Ikari and he called this 720 Degrees 2. And as you can see, he hacked the colour scheme, and as you're about to see, he hacked the entire level. So even getting from the starting point is very easy, and jumping around this game is never very easy at the best of times. At least on this crack, it's very easy to see what we've accumulated, and... You may notice on the Lemon 64 they have pictures for the crack version and the non-crack version on that website. So both are available, but you can see unlike Back to the Future, we can't grab hold of the back of cars and have those draggers around the level. But you can see some updates, and even though the colour scheme is an absolute nightmare, on this update you will find some amazing features. Current score on Lemon 64 is 6.7 for the original and 6.2 for this. And I think this game definitely deserves maybe a 4 or a 5. And that compares drastically to what the US users got, and that was the US edition. And yes, you can hear title music at the moment, so let's press fire and check this version out. And unfortunately we can't because there is a monster of a loading process. And then when we finally get to the game, after a few hours, the game loads. And you'll find this is the US edition. The graphics have taken a bit of a jump and the screen area is a little bit bigger. The actual map is bigger. And if we manage to center ourselves on the map icon and press fire, that will load the map from the disc. And you can see things are pretty similar. Unfortunately, having seen that, it takes another few days to load the game back up again, the town section at least. And this game is silent, no music or sound effects, unless you manage to score a point from a jump. The town is completely empty, there are no inhabitants at this stage except for when you complete a level, but every time you select to play a new level it will take another fortnight to load that off the disc and having done so you will find a shattering experience. Yes, this is the downhill slalom section and the flags don't appear until you've actually gone past those and you'll find that the flags aren't particularly difficult and bearing in mind that there are only four sets of flags on the entire level. 
having gone through those four sets of flags it will give you a small amount of money and then take another month to load the map maze back from the disc and so this game is a bit of a maze at this stage because the map is a little bit bigger and look at that a guy there bodybuilder working out why he's playing this game and I'm trying to work out why there are no sound effects there is no music the controls are laggy no fun at all the map is too big and it's easy to get lost and there are very few inhabitants it takes an absolute millennium to load anything off the disc and having done so the events are barely playable so this game is absolutely diabolical and I'd say it's worth probably 1 out of 10. It was created by Tengen who created APB and many other games, many of those released by Demark, and that's why Demark has a bad reputation from all the dire Tengen conversions. So the best thing about this game is skate or die and we get to see some bees but unfortunately trying to load the ramp level the game then crashed. So thank you for viewing 720 degrees on the Commodore 64.